Uh, hi everyone, welcome to our talk today. So uh, today our topic is to use WebAssembly to run AI inference. Um, so um, I am the founding member of What's the Match project. As you can see um, on the slides, that, that's our GitHub repo. It's a CNCF project. And uh, Michael is the founder of, uh, of this project, What's the Match. Uh, so I think we will start with two demos. Um, we are going to run open source Gen AI models on your infra and or bundled with your own apps. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, so <clears throat> yeah, I think the best way to get started instead of explaining what is Wasm and why we use it for AI and all kind of stuff, you know, I think it's probably easier if we just uh, have a demo to see what we can do. And uh, what are the benefits? Why, why don't you use Python? Why don't you use Olama? Why don't you use any of the other large language model, model toolkit out there? So um, here is a GitHub repo that we prepared. It's called TalkTalk. Talk, you know, so let me actually um, exit from here and uh, uh, please excuse my messy lap desktop is here. So I'm going to run this demo twice. You know, um, if you look at this UI, this is, um, you know, uh, a lot of you may be familiar with this, with this UI. It's a, it's a web UI. And uh, it allowed me to talk to my computer. And uh, then it would generate some answers. So let me talk to my computer now. I hit record. I'm in Salt Lake City right now. Can you recommend some places to visit? So hopefully that you heard my question, right? I said, I'm in Salt Lake City right now. Can you recommend some places to visit? And I'm going to submit it. You know, so basically, it sends this voice to a server. It's come back right back, OK? So, you know, so here it says, I'm transcribed. So I'm in Salt Lake City. Can you recommend some place to visit? And here is the answer in text and also in voice. So I'll play the voice and let you hear it. Utah State Capitol, Natural History Museum of Utah, and Great Salt Lake. Also check out the Gateway Mall, Red Butte Garden, and Ensign Peak. All right, so you know, um, so this is, um, you know, it seems like a basic application, right? You know, just uh, transcribe voice to text, use a large language model to answer the text, and then synthesize the text back to voice, okay? So, um, but uh, what I want to focus on is that this, the whole setup requires very little resources. This whole setup runs on the lowest GPU machine you can buy, you can possibly buy on Azure. So it's on Media T4. It runs three Gen AI models with their own runtime, with their own prompts, and with the, the entire application. It's just running on a single GPU machine, right? So this is the first demo. And I want to do the demo again. This time, perhaps go even more extreme. To have everything on my laptop. As you can see, I have a gazillion things running on my laptop. I have the Google Slides, I have everything. But I also have a large language model in the, the three large, in the GNI model that I talk about, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a different question, you know? So what should I ask? Should I ask? Okay. So what are the most important conferences of the Linux Foundation? My hope is that it's going to say KubeCon, but I don't know, you know? So. <laughs> So I'm going to submit it, and uh, so basically submit locally. If you look at the, uh, all the model now runs locally. I can even turn, you know, because I'm presenting from Google Slides, so I can't really turn on my Wi-Fi, but, you know, I could. So here it says, what are the most important conferences in the Linux Foundation? Here, the talk AI, I'll let it speak for itself. The Linux Foundation hosts several key conferences. These include Linux Summit, Embedded Linux Conference, ELC, Open Source Summit, Cloud Native Con plus KubeCon. Yay, did say KubeCon, right? <laughs> so, yeah, that's a, um, so what I want to um, convey here is really that's, um, you know, I have a fairly low end MacBook. You know, the MacBook is like three years old. I bought it in, during the pandemic. And uh, it's only have 16 gig of memory. And I'm running a uh, Llama 3.2 large language model. Uh, a Whisper V2 large model, and uh, another uh, GPT Soviet TTS model. So all of them, because um, because we have a lightweight runtime and we have a runtime that can handle multiple models, so we were able to run all of them on a single piece of hardware, on, uh, or or on very low end. Um, um, 
cloud machine. So let me go back to the presentation and uh, to go to the next two. So if you want to try this on your own machine, you can actually try this on, on your own machine today. You know, if you have a MacBook or if you have a, say, you know, uh, Azure machine, you know, running NVIDIA that you can try to try today. Just go to that GitHub repository. It has all the instructions. You can do just what I, it can even switch languages. You know, um, you know, when we demo it from our booth, you know, we have a, a, a contingent of Japanese people come by and they all ask questions in Japanese and they will answer in Japanese, which I have no idea what they talk about, but I'm told, you know, it was pretty good. So, you know, that's a, so it was great fun. If you, uh, if you have time, you should, uh, you do that, and then you know this is just to repeat what I've said. You know, there's a three uh, very popular JRI models running on the same hardware. You know, using a unified um, a runtime that we call Wasm Edge, Llama Edge, which we're going to get into, um, you know, details in a minute. And uh, the key takeaways here really is that um, there is a runtime that is uh, that is super, that support multiple JRI models. It not only just support large language model, but also support voice to text, text to voice, and I, what I haven't showed are text to image, stable diffusion type of models, and text to video, and you know things like that. It's extremely lightweight, so the entire application, you know, excluding the large language models themselves, the entire application combined is 20 megabytes. Okay, so you know that's. Uh, to give you an idea of how that compares, which um, we're also going to talk about in a minute, the Python PyTorch Docker image, at very minimum, is three gigabytes. It goes all the way up to nine gigabytes. Okay, that's compressed Docker image. Okay, so you know um, we are talking about things that are two or three orders of magnitude smaller. That's uh, and runs super fast and runs you know um, uh, um, you know very lightweight and very fast. And another thing I want to also I want to highlight is the application that runs on the cloud a media machine that I showed in the first demo and the local MacBook on the second demo are actually the exact same application. It's not the application that has to be rewritten for the, the CUDA framework or the Metal framework on the Mac being recompiled. I did nothing. I just copied the binary application using FTP, using SCP directly from my development machine to the media machine and it runs out of the box on the GPU right there, right? So, you know, so three main takeaways is that, you know, what I have demonstrated is support multiple GNI models using a single uh, runtime framework, very lightweight and portability across GPU platforms. So, uh, I'm going to turn over to Mary to do the second demo. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, the second demo is a video translation tool powered by large language model and was a match. So um, yeah, I will show um, how uh, a video that I have already translated from Chinese into English, um, but it's uh, only subtitling, but you can also do dubbing in English or other languages. Um, so yeah, I'll play this first. 子欣,你好,好久不见。好久不见。嗯,可以说过去大概有三年的时间都没有更新视频,哈。嗯,很多关心你的网友肯定都会在问,过去的三年的时间里头,子欣都在忙些什么。Yeah, so yeah, that's a very short demo, so that's a very uh, big influencer on YouTube, is a Chinese influencer. Uh, he has, uh, she has been like silent for three years, and that's, um, Recently, she uh, started to post a video, so like, um, that's only in Chinese, but we uploaded this uh, to this tool, uh, video translation tool, and uh, it get dubbed or um, captioned in English. So I will do a demo to uh, the other way around, to uh, upload an English video and get a, a Chinese translation. Uh, so yeah, I'll open the videolengua.com. Uh, let me open it. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna do English to Chinese, and uh, this is a video recording we did this August test, test. Uh, of Linus Torvalds. Uh, he did a keynote interview uh, to talk about the scaling law of AI. So here I can choose whether to dub it or to caption it. So I'm gonna choose dub, dub it in Chinese uh, from English. So here I, uh, I'm gonna enter my email address. After it's down, it would be 
uh, it would send, would send an email to me uh, of the translated video. Yeah, yeah. While we are waiting for that, uh, because it's also tr powered by uh, large language models, so it can take a little bit. So we will um, come back to this, after, I guess, after we have finished the presentation. Um, yeah. We will go on with our presentation. So yeah, while we wait for that, I think one of the uh, most interesting aspects of this is that, you know, uh, I'm sure you have heard of this, this term a lot, is scaling law applied to inference, right? You know, so for, for the longest time, you know, we saw the scaling law is on the training or pre-training side. When you train it by longer, when you train it with more data, the AI is going to be smarter. However, you know, uh, one of the strongest uh, rationale, the use case of, of using open source AI is really because we have now scaling law at inference. You know, it's a, this is a very sharp contrast with the demo that I just did. I, the demo I just did, I wouldn't say it's real-time audio, but it's semi-real-time, right? You know, if I say, say something, I submit, and uh, it comes back in like two, three seconds, right? You know, that's t 10 seconds tops, you know? But for this video, even the video that might have shown is only 40, uh, 40 seconds, it takes a couple minutes to translate that. Why? Because the whole, in the whole process, we have multiple large language models to translate the same video and they check against each other, and they give suggestions to each other which one is the best translation. So after a couple minutes, if you, if you let the, the AI think longer, you would get a much better result. So you know, that's where you know, um, we have this system actually set up you know, when, when we had a, 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 you know, a, a, a KubeCon site event in China. You know, we have this system set up to do real-time translation. And uh, you, would think, you would see that the, the translation result is not that good. But if you give it sufficient time to think, you know, if you give it a couple minutes to think about the 40 seconds video, it's going to give you much better translation because it's going to have multiple different uh, uh, large language models. And each of them going to have different prompts. Some of the prompts would be um, to be context aware that this is the talk that given in KubeCon China in Hong Kong. So it would know that the uh, um, you know, the words in there are going to be pronounced in certain ways. So for instance, you know, people talk about, you know, here people talk about Kubernetes or GitHub. You know, those are fairly uncommon words in the, you know, in the, in the regular English speaking world, right? You know, so for the, for the, uh, for the voice model and for the large language to pick up those words and understand what they are, oftentimes you would need, um, you know, special prompts. And in order to do all this, I think, you know, um, to have highly efficient runtime to run large language model on your own infrastructure is very important. It's not just, uh, you know, a, a genetic system that I use all the same model that come from OpenAI, that they are all the same model and just prompt it differently. You know, that's a, that just would not give you, um, I think, the optimal result. What you want is the model that is fine-tuned and trained in slightly different ways so that they would give different answers, you know, that's um, when we see the same content, right? You know, so, and then you have those models to cross-check each other to say, you know, um, you know, um, um, then they would vote to say, you know, which translation that they would want to use on each individual sentence, right? So this is the whole point, you know, that's, uh, um, you know, the, um, the, once we have done this, uh, this demo, the, the, the takeaway point for this demo really is that, you know, for uh, a genetic system, you really need multiple specialized models. You need applications to be tightly coupled with the models. Not just I write any application that's going to work for the OpenAI. You know, it's that I'm going to write application that's specifically for this model, for the Llama 3.2, but not necessarily work for Llama 3.1 because the prompt structure is different, right? The models are different. Or the, the model is going to work for um, Chenwen 2.5, which is a Chinese trained model that understands that language much better, right? So, you know, so there's lots of um, things that you can tweak yourself, you know, if you have an open source based uh, solution, a stack of solutions. And of course, it also requires very efficient use of GPU compute because, you know, when you have all those models running, they sometimes they are all need GPU resources, sometimes they, you know, they are all idle, right? You know, so you need a, a, a highly efficient framework that can orchestrate, you know, those, those workloads across GPUs. So let's go back and see if this, um, this translation is done. Where is it? Yeah, so it's done. Right, you, can, you can play. Yeah. Okay, I thought it would take longer. So that's uh, Linus. What is the issue? 我非常清楚,今天可以使用AI来编写JavaScript和Python等语言。但我们还没有达到AI 
Should we like play the original? Yeah, I think I think you get an idea, right? You know, it's a mixed English and Chinese. You know, if you speak Chinese here, you, you you'd be able to know. But I speak Chinese, so I guarantee you, it's a good translation. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, but you can see that uh, you know um, he makes uh, you know the translation makes English word with Chinese words, and it handles it very well. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, go back to the presentation. Um, um, now, why was it? Uh, I guess for Kubka attendees, wasn't might not sound that familiar, uh, especially if you uh, consider using it as a container. Uh, so it's not a very so it's like comparatively young. So, uh, but it's uh, already being used in um, the browser for a long time. So. Um, uh, it became the W3C standard, the fourth one, uh, in 2015. And um, uh, all the uh, browsers support WebAssembly. And uh, in 2019, WASI got released. So that would allow WASM to access system. WASI stands for WebAssembly System Interface. So um, that's when server-side WASM is ready to go mainstream. And uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I was wrong. So uh, W3C uh, group uh, was founded in 2015, and it became the fourth uh, language for the web uh, in 2019. Um, and um, in 2022, the CNCF uh, survey have founded that containers uh, that's the only key funding they have of that survey. That is, containers are the new normal and WebAssembly is the future. So um, this is a kind of re recent news. So Wikipedia posted on their blog saying that uh, it slashed uh, a lot of uh, uh, milliseconds of its, its WASM execution with WASM Edge. So, uh, that's used on wiki functions. It's a serverless function platform uh, integrated into uh, Wikipedia. And it's one of the most uh, popular websites worldwide. And um, it's, uh, so these posts have got uh, over 120 views and 400 plus upvotes up in just half a day. So uh, why not Python? All right, so um, thank you, Mighty. So we had a, you know, a, a good introduction, what was them? But then why do we use Wasm to drive GPU? You know, so this is a question I always, you know, um, when I talk to people who run, you know, large language model locally, I, t I ask them, you know, raise your hand, what, what stack do you use? And I would say 90% of them use Python, okay? But, you know, because, you know, we automatically associate machine learning and all that stuff with Python. But Python is great for training models. It's actually terrible for inference because it's extremely bloated. I, you know, I dare not run Python without virtual environments or without, um, you know, Docker, right? You know, because, you know, um, in a few days, your computer would be completely unusable because, you know, there will be version conflicts everywhere. You know, that's, uh, so this is one of the big issue with Python. And Python is also, um, it's very bloated, but very complex, and also, that makes it very vulnerable to uh, supply chain attacks and you know things like that. So to run it on production and public-facing inference frameworks and uh, inference applications, I think it's a um, you know my, in my opinion it would be a mistake. And uh, that is not just my opinion. You know that's uh, so Greg Brockman here is OpenAI's CTO, and uh, you know that's I quote him. You know that's modern machine modern machine learning engineering is making Python not be a bottleneck, right? You know, because you spend so much time installing Python and try to figure out the conflicts and you know stuff like that. And uh, if you look at what XAI did, you know they um, they recently released their API. They have been um, promoting the idea of all their stuff is written in Rust. You know, there's no Python that goes into their uh, you know model serving and you know things like that. And uh, also to echo the point, I I. I I said earlier, just to prove it, you know, is that, uh, you know, if you do the PyTorch Docker image is, with CUDA in it, that's, um, you know, eight gigabytes right there, you know, almost the nine gigabytes, right? You know, so that's compressed Docker image. You know, that's when you explode it on your device, it's gonna be a lot bigger, right? You know, just recall the entire application that I have just shown you, you know, the three agent, um, you know, translation and uh, question answer application is only 20 megabytes. Okay. So then, 
Okay. No Python. Okay. Then what about other um, very popular tools like Olama? You know, that's I personally use Olama. I like it a lot. You know, that's uh, I believe they're on stage at uh, you know um, at KubeCon EU a couple months ago. You know, so um, but there are some uh, issues when you try to use it not just on your laptop but on uh, say a cloud machine or edge device, right? So the biggest problem that we have encountered is that it only supports large language models. You know, it's recently supported vision-based large language models, but it doesn't support things like Whisper or stable diffusion or things like that. But as you have seen, those are integral parts of your entire application. So if that's the case, then you still need to introduce Python. You just use Olama to run Llama. You know, that's, uh, but the rest of the stuff, you still need to find solutions for that, right? The other thing is about the operation, operational weight because it's designed to be a desktop tool. So it sort of functions like Docker. You know, so it has its own daemon that monitors the process, which requires pseudo um, privilege, and it has its own repositories that you have to make sure you have connection to, and you know things like that. So you know, while I like it a lot, I use it on my own computer, but I don't use it on the server for this uh, for those reasons. So now we say Python is too heavy, Olama may be too heavy. So why why we just go straight to the to the most lightweight solutions? Why don't we just go to C plus plus? Like we have seen, there's Llama.cpp, there's Whisper.cpp, there's Torch.cpp, there's VRM, and you know there's a variety of different C++ based solutions where you can run your large language model, right? But as I mentioned earlier, you know that's why we had this, or we did this first demo twice, is that portability is a really huge problem for C++, right? You know, so especially when GPU was involved. Okay, so you know that's a, a um, if you develop a C++ application on your Mac, you need to use the Mac GPU SDK and they compile to that target and then run it. Uh, none of this stuff going to work on the NVIDIA stuff, and none of this stuff going to work on AMD. And the, with all those GPU for, uh, and NPU you know, uh, architecture that are coming along, you know, it become, become uh, I think, a huge problem for portability, right? You know, that, then, of course, you know, people um, are not really interested in working with C++ anymore, especially application developers. You know, I think Rust and Go would be the languages they would much more prefer. You know, so I think to provide a modern language framework that's uh, that on top of those, but do not add much weight to that C++ uh, framework would be the ideal case. You know, that's uh, that's why we have um, we created um, you know um, a, a Wasm Edge and the application on top of it called Llama Edge, right? You know, so that's where you see parts of those demos. And uh, so, um, before I hand over to Miley, I, I would also like to add, you know, um, there's currently a um, couple hundred thousand machines running Llama Edge to run large language model inference. So it's, um, you know, so if you ask me, it's production ready, right? You know, it's, uh, so mostly are personal laptops or, you know, um, um, edge devices like Raspberry Pi type of devices or Orange Pi, or those, all, all those Pi devices that has MPU on it, right? Uh, robotic devices and also um, um, edge cloud servers, like the servers you, uh, and GPU servers you get from, um, you know, traditional CDN providers like Cloudflare or Fastly, you know, you know places like those, right? So yeah, that's a, so Llama Edge is a, uh, is a Rust application that we build the large language model runtime on top of Wasm Edge, so. Right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Llama Edge is just like Michael mentioned, it's a, a a set of tools, uh, AI related to, uh, we build uh, on top of Wasm Edge, and it's a dev platform, you can see it that way, and it um, allows you to build OpenAI compatible API servers. Uh, it would support multi-model APIs and tool calls, and uh, building search, and also RAG. So you can uh, write in your, uh, in different languages, like uh, Rust and JavaScript, and compile it into um, web assembly, and then it would be fully like uh, portable and lightweight. And uh, yeah, uh, so that's a, a GitHub repo for the uh, Lamaid project. And um, uh, I think we have just already covered those. So it's um, lightweight and portable, and uh, you can uh, use any open source large language models uh, on hugging phase. And it's embeddable, and uh, it's uh, uh, because it's already uh, uh, seamlessly integrated into the Kubernetes ecosystem, and it's uh, officially supported by these uh, different orchestration uh, tools and uh, uh, 
a con uh, community and federal island red hat. So yeah, I guess uh, that would uh, bring us to the uh, calling for contributor parts. So uh, as an open source project, we always need more contributors. So you can go check out our GitHub repo and uh, check out these different tags like Good First Issue or Hacktoberfest, which allows you to win small gifts by um, finishing uh, different tasks. And also uh, LF mentorship. I think we are one of the uh, projects that provide the, mo uh, the most mentors in the mentorship program with the Linux Foundation. So every year we would have uh, 12 mentees. So uh, four mentees each, uh, each term, so three terms a year. And also Google Summer of Code. And uh, yeah, and if you guys have uh, successfully run um, what we have demoed or like have uh, wrote an uh, article about it, you can participate in this um, incentive program. And the, every month we would have a monthly community meeting at the first this, uh, Tuesday of each month. Um, and it's all public and it, everyone can sign up and join us. Uh, so we're gonna uh, host a well, wasn't dev, dev room in uh, Brussels in Faustem. And right now the CFP has opened and also uh, this uh, GoSim is the, some, some new conference we just started from last year. So it's uh, very similar to Foston. Uh, it's hosted this year in Del Delft, uh, uh, Del Delft, and Delft, sorry, Delft and uh, Beijing this year. Uh, and oh, uh, last year it was in Shanghai and it was a co-located event with KubeCon China. So, um, and also KCD 2025. Um, I'm hosting KCD Beijing March 15th, which would be the first Kubernetes community, Kubernetes community days uh, of the world. So uh, the CIP will be open soon. And also uh, we are one of the co-organizers for Rust China Conf. Uh, if you guys are interested in, in speaking, you can submit a talk. And that would be our um, QR code for our Discord community and uh, YouTube. And also that's our uh, GitHub and uh, Twitter handles and LinkedIn names. So if you are interested, uh, please reach out to us. And I guess that, uh, that will be the end of it. Do you have anything to add, Michael? No, I think we have a couple minutes. So, you know, so if there's uh, questions, you know, that's, uh, we are happy to answer them. You know. I know this talk didn't get into a lot of technical details. So we didn't really show you the Rust code that kind of, you know, that's perform all those. But they're not super complicated. Just go to our GitHub repositories. You know, those are, I think, you know, like I said, compiling to like 20 megabytes, it can't be that difficult. So, you know, so if there's any questions, please. No? Okay, then, you know, so um, we're gonna stay here um, for the next couple of minutes before the next speaker shows up. So, you know, so if you have anything you want to talk to us privately, you know, you can uh, come up and otherwise, you know, thank you very so much for coming to our talk and uh, wish you a good day. <laughs>